Hey Morgan, how you feeling? Surprisingly good. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got here. Hi, I'm Morgan Donner, and recently I made a red late medieval dress, and YouTube, in their infinite wisdom, declared the video to be too naughty. This is my friend Abby Cox. She also made a red medieval dress and was also declared naughty. We're going to be going to the Ren Fair very soon here, but in order to avoid further ire from YouTube, the swift hand of demonetization, we're going to make sure we're suitably covered. If YouTube wants her to be no boobs, absolutely none, then we shall be none. Do you get it? Do you get the pun? Do you like it? This right here is a scapular. They were worn by medieval nuns who we have abundant imagery from the medieval period going about their daily activities, but we also have some very fun tongue-in-cheek images such as in the marginalia of manuscripts where they've turned them into little half monsters and fish and very fun fantastical things. One of my favorite examples of this is this image where our beloved nun character is plucking fresh fruit from the tree of... use your imagination. But back to the scapular, which I will admit I kind of think of in my head very often as a tabard, probably because of World of Warcraft. There's a similar sort of garment in there, and it doesn't help that I'm going to be adding a little decoration to the front, which also feels very WoW-esque, very heraldic, in a way that a scapular usually isn't. But that said, I'm cutting out some hearts from wool in the same weight of fabric that the dress itself is made of, and I'm going to be applying some freezer paper to that. The freezer paper is really, really nice because it sort of sticks to the fabric itself on one side, and then you can use that slightly tougher edge that the freezer paper creates to push against and to fold your pieces of the applique in toward itself. This is great for when you want precision. You can really get some very particular shapes if that's what you're aiming for. It's also really nice to use this method if you're looking for consistency. I wanted to make several hearts, so I wanted to make sure that they were all as the same as I could possibly make them. And you can actually reuse these pieces of freezer paper several times, or you can cut several out depending on your needs. It's great. Once I had all my hearts, I got them pinned onto the base front layer of the tabard slash scapular, and I was gonna go with just one, but I decided that looked a little bit naked, so we went ahead and added, we're avoiding nakedness, remember. I went ahead and went for three on the front, I feel like that fills in the space a lot better, and then I just stitched the applique on, making sure that my stitches are secure, but, you know, relatively invisible as much as I can. Then the whole thing got finished off with a lining. That helps make it so that the inside is both finished, but also very smooth and wouldn't get caught up on the fabric of the dress itself while it was being worn. We have made it. We are here at the Ren Bear. It is now, of course, raining, <laughs> but we are very appropriately attired. Everything's good. Everything's covered. We won't make anybody unhappy. You can't demonetize us today, too. <laughs> this weekend at the Ren Fair is the weekend of love, the weekend of couples and vow renewals. And so we are therefore not just nuns, but specifically Weapons. love nuns. But in order to keep it at least somewhat historically accurate, we are, of course, including a little bit of fruit of the tree of used your imagination. <laughs> and since Halloween is just around the corner, we figured that we would indulge in that beautiful trick-or-treat spirit. And, you know, so we just have to ask, are you feeling naughty? Or are you feeling nice? Do you feel naughty or nice today? Um, have I been good? Never, darling. Naughty. <laughs> I'm feeling naughty. I'm feeling naughty. Naughty. Excellent. <laughs> Are you also naughty? Um, sure. Yes. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Naughty. Have you ever read Ice Planet Barbarians? I love friendly. I have not. No, but I've read Rich Planet. Does that call? <laughs> that we the, have a winner! Yes, the alien smut book that was viral on TikTok. That's amazing. How have you never one for you. Thank you. Enjoy your day. <laughs> Thank you. There. You're welcome. Historically accurate gifts from nuns. Thank you. So for you, you get a pocket. For the for the weekend of love. You yes. remember. Okay, I got I got a special one for you. I love you. <laughs> oh, 
I got a big one. No, you're good. <laughs> you haven't read ice plants, so you just get a small one. <laughs> That's there. That's or you can have a poop if you'd rather have a poop. I'll take my tiny one. Okay, take your tiny one. It'll be good for, good for jokes. Fruit of the naughty tree. Fruit of the naughty tree. <laughs> it was a great day, and it wasn't just all asking if folks wanted to have some fruit of the naughty yes, tree. Right. Do you mind being in a video? Yes. Do you mind? Oh my god. <laughs> yes. We got several gifts along the way. So sweet. Oh, thank, you. oh, thank you. And we gave out a lot of very nice hearts to celebrate that beautiful weekend of love. Such a cute fair theme. Note to self, though, I should definitely make sure to bring some safety pins for next time if we do this in the future. We made a ton of people laugh, we made a ton of people smile, and folks just enjoying a great time with us all around. Thanks for all y'all shenanigans. Yeah. Thank you for participating in our shenanigans. And even just enjoying the fair in general. We had a really, really great time <laughs> hanging out together and being silly. Although I will say I do highly recommend doing a bit, doing some sort of silly thing together because it makes it so that you're not just enjoying the fair as an outsider but also wholeheartedly participating in it in a way that i think is really lovely we of course did the traditional things we did some shopping we did some eating we did some drinking we helped a poor drunk gentleman find his way to some food I'm and water to help him get better you sure about that no you sure you don't want some water no i'm worried about you yeah, I'm being pretty super right now. Yeah, you, how many have I'll you had, buddy? You <laughs> then we played some fair games. What are we doing? Are we just swinging? We're just swinging. I think you're gonna kick my ass. Okay. We are weak nuns. We met a ton of folks who had watched our channels, which was so cool. Chance to say hi. Oh, thank you. I'm gonna lose my shirt right now. Take a deep breath. I'm just gonna go in a red dress. We took a ton of pictures, both of ourselves and with folks. Are you from Atlas in Wonderland? No, we're just love nuns. Yep. Ah. So is it still recording? Yep. Oh, sure. Sure. The rain from the beginning of the day wasn't too bad, but it did leave our shoes and hems very fun. Show those muddy shoes. Muddy, muddy feet. Yeah. Uh, your, your shoes are beautiful. Yeah. They have that fair patina. How bad is it back there? Um. You know, it's not as bad as it could be. Note to self, do not use water-soluble paint. What are you doing? Oh, <laughs> I thought you tried to show your underbits. <laughs> Teach them about <laughs> Don't look, do not perceive. We have had a glorious day of love nunning. We've shared love all over that fair. <laughs> and I think, I think we are ready to get our, get our little butts home. Time to go to the convent. The convent? Get thee to a nunnery. Do some evening prayer. <laughs> we don't know if it's mountains or not, but it's horizontal time. Today's video is kindly brought to you by Beam Dream Powder, and we are absolutely exhausted from our day of love nunning, and we, we need, absolutely need a good night's sleep to help get us set for tomorrow, because there's more tomorrow. <laughs> Beam Dream Powder is like a tasty nighttime chocolate, which is a great part of a nighttime routine. It contains ingredients like magnesium and melatonin, which are gonna help you get that fully rested feel through all your different sleep stages. They have several different flavors and styles, including some seasonal ones that are about to sell out, so go check those out now if you're interested. Abby says that the peanut butter is pretty good, so if you're on the fence on what to get, Give it a try. It has no added sugar and it's about 15 calories. I always have trouble getting to sleep while I'm traveling and I'm kind of a grump about it, but adding Beam to my bed routine really helps get my mind and my body in that right space to sleep properly and makes me just so much more prepared to take on the next day of adventuring. If you also have some serious love nothing to do and want to try Beam's best-selling dream powder, take advantage of their biggest sale of the year and get up to 50% off for a limited time when you click my link in the description or scan my QR code up here and use code CYBER at checkout. Night night. We woke up the next day well rested, but I had a startling realization. I didn't get any naughty. Abby got to hold the naughty basket the whole day, being very, very fun, and I didn't get any. And that's just simply will not do. So today, I think I'm gonna go ahead and have Abby give me a tattoo. No, 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 not that Abby, this Abby. All right, I feel like I have a history of doing things that I've been thinking about for months or even years 
and then I finally get up and do them and I share them with you guys and you guys are like, oh my God, what happened? I know it's in my head and that like, I, you know, oh yeah, I know exactly what I'm planning to do and don't really explain. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay down and explain <laughs> uh, my, my thought process here. This is my very, very first tattoo, which I'm very excited about. It's funny, my mom actually has a ton of tattoos. When I turned 18, she was like, you know, if you'd like, I would be happy to buy you a like big birthday graduation high school, pre you know, present of getting me a tattoo. And I thought about it, thought about it, just but nothing, no design was like the one. So I didn't do it and that's fine. But you know, it's always been a thing that like, yeah, I'd like to do that someday. And eventually we got our greyhounds, which are very lovely and sweet and adorable. I finally thought, okay, you know what? Maybe, maybe when one of them passes away, I'll get a memorial tattoo that feels, feels good. Like it feels like it's fitting in the right spot. But then the more I thought about it, like I fall to pieces. Every time I think about any pet dying, it d doesn't matter, makes me cry, makes me sad. No, I don't think I'm gonna be in the right headspace to do that for like a long time after. So I'm like, you know what? Let's go ahead and commemorate the living. Get uh, a piece for my very first pupperu, Jean-Luc. And that is, that is what we're up to today. I knew that I not only wanted a greyhound, but specifically wanted a very historical looking greyhound. I have a whole Pinterest board full of images I've collected over the years. And there's one that always stood out to me every time I saw it. It's just such a striking and lovely little posed greyhound. It's from a Tudor picture book from about 15, 20 or so. And I think picture books are so cool. They're also called model books. They're meant to be little books that you can use as references when you're doing manuscripts or illumination. Later on, you have some Elizabethan ones for embroidery and lace making. And it's, it's just, it's so neat. It's very much the clip art of its day. But this particular book is neat because it has not only animals, it has plants, it has tools, it has furniture. It also has some letters. It's just a little bit of everything and I love it. I sent Abby the reference picture weeks ahead of time so that she had a chance to get it drawn up and get that all prepped. Whenever I came in, we took a look at the stencil. I felt like it was already exactly the right size. So we just talked a little bit about placement to make sure that we both had kind of the same mental picture and I could get her advice on what she thought would be the best idea, keeping in mind my future plans for that same leg. So that all worked out beautifully. And then from there, she prepped the location where the tattoo was gonna go. And once that was ready, she went ahead and put down the stencil itself on. We verified that I was happy with the location, the placement, the size, everything, now that I could see it kind of on my leg. Then she prepped some tools while I got myself settled onto the little bed here. I have no idea what she's dabbing on me. Something useful, I presume. And then into proper tattooing time. Uh, this being my first tattoo, I was curious to find out how it would feel to me. Like, would I think it was the worst thing ever? Would I not feel it at all? No, it was kind of right in the middle of those. <laughs> I mean, it was fine. It hurt, but I don't know, in the same way that a lot of things hurt and that's fine. It just is what it is. I've heard some people refer to it as being a similar level to pain as a cat scratch. And I could see it. I could definitely see that or like a scrape like scraping your knee, kind of similar to that. I think it's quite similar to someone else brushing out your hair and like it's super, super tangled. So there's just a lot of accidental <laughs> pulling going on. If you could make that more continuous and steady, yeah, that is kind of what this felt like to me. We had a great time chit-chatting about pets and greyhounds and tattoos and our dress-up shenanigans and what we do with making YouTube videos and sewing and stuff. It was a lot of fun. I do want to say we did let her know that we were going to be coming dressed up first and like, is that cool with you? Is that okay? And she said, yeah, no, it's great. So I do want to be clear that I did not just randomly show up to my tattoo appointment dressed silly because I, I'm not that kind of person. I'm more of a check-in, see if you're cool with it first kind of person. It is very, very cool being able to have the footage to look back on because from where I was, I really couldn't see what was going on the whole time. My leg did not bend that way. So it was much more about feeling what was happening and that was it. All right, hey Morgan, how are you feeling? Surprisingly good. Nice. So it's really, really neat that Abby, not the tattooer, Abby, that also love none, 
<laughs> was there with me to take these videos, which I'm very appreciative about. So it's it's really cool to have footage of your own tattoo stuff happening. If you're ever in the Bloomington, Indiana area, I, I highly recommend Miss Abby here. She was fantastic. I really love working with her. <laughs> the reason I got in touch with her is because a lot of her prior artwork had a very bold line art feel that had that almost medieval woodcut sort of aesthetic that I felt would go really, really well with this particular piece. This ended up being a lot faster than I thought it would be. It ended up taking about an hour. It was quite fast. Before you know it, we are all done. She gave it a final cleanup, made sure that I had a good look at it in the mirror, which was very fun. And then she put some clear bandages over top. Look at my fancy little leg. You can really tell here that I do not ever have my legs out in the sun. Wow. And with that, I feel my naughtiness meter has been sated. I'm feeling very satisfied. Although to be clear, I do not think that tattoos are naughty or bad in any way. This is just meant to be in silliness. The whole video is meant to be silliness. Like I thought it'd be super fun to do kind of a my own take on some of those Halloween costumes that you might see in a Halloween store like sexy nurse or naughty nun. So that was a lot of fun. All the jokes about demonetization are slightly less in good fun because I am earnestly a bit annoyed about that. It Skip forward a couple minutes if you want to skip me ranting. But just for one moment, I want to say, I feel like as a sewing-ish historical channel, I'm gonna reference images that show people in a state of undress, like they're getting ready for bed or they're getting ready to take a bath or something, which is great because you can see the under layers that they're wearing. Very useful for historical costuming. Or they might be in some disheveled state, which means that you can see the lining and the insides of their garments, which is also very, very useful information as a kind of costuming sort of focus. And that's not even to mention the fact that I, myself, am often in some sort of state of mid-dress because I'm trying on mock-ups and so you might see cleavage. It happens. <laughs> that's just how it's gonna work. So unless I'm going to Photoshop bikinis into all images from now on. Like, ignore the fact that this is a 15th century lady wearing a modern string bikini. It's fine. It's great. Don't ask questions. Or I guess I'm gonna have to exclusively work on my mannequins from now on. Like, <sighs> anyways, that said, I had a great time doing the video, even if there was a little bit of side eye happening during and I also just had a ton of fun going and getting my first tattoo. If you guys have gotten a tattoo, tell me what your first one was. I think there's always kind of an extra interesting story around a first tattoo in particular. I feel like after that you're like smiley face, sure, why not? You know, you just are a lot more willing to do things for funsies. I feel like the first one, there's always a story. <laughs> Not necessarily a good reason, but a story. I'd also love to hear your description of how you would describe the feeling of getting a tattoo. Because I think that everyone describes it differently and it's very interesting. I also feel like it'd be really fun if you have other ideas for silly, like, nun puns, nun outfits. Like, I like the, I like the idea of love nun because they love nun. <laughs> but... I think it'd be really fun to hear your guys' ideas for similar future things because it was super comfy as a fair costume. Absolutely would do again. All right, I think I'm gonna close off by showing you a little bit of our St. Louis adventures. We, we did some dressing up, we did some photo shoots, super fun, super cute. We took some photos that are very like cringe family mall photos that I am so excited. If they're not here in the video in like two seconds, then as usual, follow me on Instagram and hopefully sometime within the next six months, I'll remember to post some, which do you like that hard sell on following me on Instagram? All right, thank you guys for watching and thank you to Beam for sponsoring the video. Check out the link below and use my code cyber to get up to 50% off your order with them. I am gonna go enjoy myself a quiet, Halloween. I hope you guys have a great time. Probably you guys already went to your Halloween parties if you're going to. But anyways, goodbye. Love you.